Hi, my name is Samash and you're watching Casual DIY Channel. In today's video, some basics about a belt sander. Check out the video. Belt sanders are usually used to remove a lot of material from rough sawn boards very, very quickly. They are so powerful and the size of the foot plate here, the size of the belt sander makes it easy. This tool is definitely not something that you're going to use to finish off a project to a nice a high standard. For that, you really need to use a random orbital sander. Now they are different types of sizes of these machines and usually they refer to the size of the belt that you can actually use. If you've got large big boards that need sanding then go for the biggest available. However if you are just general DIYer or you've got smaller boards then obviously the smaller versions would be absolutely fine. In my case I've got the uh, Bosch belt sander and these you know they look or more or less all the same. You're going to have a handle at the front, handle at the back. On the other side you're going to see a dust port just like here. Usually these machines will have a dust bag. However, I don't really recommend that. Uh, if you've got the ability to use a shop vac that would be far better option. I've got a shop vac and that's what I'm going to be using as these machines as they remove a lot of material they will create a lot of dust. Sometimes the belt sanders will have variable speeds that you can adjust. Unfortunately, this doesn't. But, uh, you know, if you are picking one up, or if you are in a market of buying one, definitely try to get the one with variable speeds as, you know, not all the jobs require the full speed, the full RPMs of this tool. On the handle here, I've got the trigger and that's a pin that will lock this machine in place in the on position so you don't really have to hold this trigger all the time thanks to that especially when you've got a lot of material to tackle that's actually quite handy and you don't have to focus on that okay let's have a look at the belt itself and how you can actually change the belt. Usually it's more or less the same operation in any belt sander. You've got two rollers, one at the back, one at the front. The one at the back is actually powered by the motor of the machine, whereas the one at the front, you can adjust it so the belt is actually tracking correctly. But we'll get to that in a second. Usually you will have a lever here somewhere in the middle that will release the tension from these two wheels so you can remove the belt. So let's do that now. As you can see, that wheel moved back and the tension is now lost on the belt, so you can take it off. Another interesting thing is the foot plate, the base over here, that's always dead flat and when you're starting your sanding you always want to hit that rather than the roller itself as if you hit your workpiece with the roller, as you can see obviously you can do a ditch um, in your workpiece, so always and you need to make sure that you are landing your sander on the foot plate, but we'll get to that. Usually the belts will come in lower grids, you know, um, 60, 80, uh, 100, 120. They won't go to ultra high grids. For example, this one is uh, 120 and you can see that on the inside of the belt. But also there's a very important information here. All the belts will have an arrow. In this case, it's pointing to my right hand side. That means it indicates which way this belt needs to be placed on your belt sander. As you can see, it does have that seam over here where this belt is connected just like that and it should be used in correlation with those arrows. So the belt sander goes clockwise just like that and the arrows indicate that movement. That's the way we need to uh, put our belt on both of the wheels. Just like so. Okay. Also sometimes you'll get an arrow on your belt and that arrow needs to meet with the arrows on the belt as well. So you're never going to get lost with how to actually install the belt. Now you just secure the lever here. As you can see, the tension went on the belt and more or less, we are almost ready to go. 
Now, one thing is worth mentioning, some of the uh, belts will have arrows going both ways or will have no arrows. That means they can be uh, placed either way. It doesn't matter in that case, okay? That's just worth to remember. Okay, now we need to make sure that the belt itself is tracking correctly on both of the wheels. So it's not moving to the left and it's not moving to the right, okay? It needs to stay in the middle on those rollers. In my case, I've just got a bolt like that uh, on my right hand side here, but usually there's a nice knob you can use and turn it to the left and to the right. So what we need to do, we need to turn on the machine and then rotate uh, that bolt here to the left or to the right, depending on which way uh, the belt is going. Okay, I hope you managed to see how um, the belt itself wandered to the left hand side and then we managed to put it in the center of uh, these rollers. So now we are ready to actually do some work with this tool. Also, if that's going to be the first time you're going to be using this and you have purchased one with variable speeds, try the lowest possible speeds and the grit of the sandpaper, you know, I would go the highest you can get. Why is that? Thanks to that, it will remove a lot less material and it will give you that opportunity to learn how to use this tool. As if you were to go on the higher speed with the coarse grit on it, let's say 60, you're gonna remove a lot of material very quickly and you may not be so happy with the end results as you know, it, it is actually in a way fairly difficult to control this tool and you need to be focused and have a bit of experience to actually get really good results with it. So that's my tip for you beginners out there. Whatever material you're gonna be sanding, make sure it's clamped somehow. It's secured on your workbench. Um, I'm using a clamp just over here as you definitely don't want the project to move on you as you are sanding. And this is quite common when you use a belt sander. As I said, they pack a lot of power. And if you just drop them on your board and <laughs> turn them on, it will just go on itself. So it's important to have full control on the tool. Hence, you got a handle at the front and a handle on the back as well. And it's important to use it in this manner. Now, how do you actually start the operation? First of all, you need to go with the grain of your workpiece, as if you're gonna go against it, you're gonna leave a lot of very deep marks on the wood, and it will be ever so hard to remove that. So always remember to go with the grain of your project, of your board. On top of it, as you are starting to sand, you will turn the machine on in the air, not on the board itself, okay? Um, make sure it's at full RPM, at full speed, and then try to land it slightly as a plane would do, for example. Don't go with the nose diving down. Remember about the rollers, they are under an angle. We need to make sure that you hit the flat spot at the back of the machine first, just like so, okay? Don't do it like that as you're gonna dig into the workpiece you've got, try to land it as a plane would do, okay? With the back, you're hitting that flat spot there on your workpiece, just like so, and you continue with the movement. Never ever stop in one place for too long, as you would just create a ditch in your workpiece in a matter of seconds. As you land your machine, you just continue the motion, okay, until the end of the board. Otherwise, you'll get the board uneven and you're gonna have some dips in your project. Another good practice is to use your pencil as a guide on where you've actually been sanding and with these types of machines, you know, you're gonna be using it on roofs on timber. So it will be good indication to show where are there some uh, dips, some hills in the wood, and the pencil will show exactly that. So just make some marks on your piece of work and you'll know exactly where you've been. With each pass, you just try to overlap uh, the pass you just did.
Now, as you can see, the bell got really dirty, got clogged up with the residue from the wood. Uh, it was a rough sawn, uh, the dust and everything. So to keep that in the best possible operation, um, you can get one of these. It's a clearing block for sandpaper. It really costs pennies. I've got a whole video about this. I'm going to drop a link to it down below in the description of this video so you can check it out. But have a look how we can easily clean this belt out. Check that out. So, so much better, isn't it? Simple thing to use. Now there's one more thing I want to show you with a belt sander. As you can see, I've clamped the belt sander to my workbench with the belt facing up. Now you can actually make jigs for that, but I found that two clamps usually are just fine for this purpose. And now you can sand smaller items on a belt sander uh, and you know, uh, try to get some different shapes as you are having that bit of that round uh, bit just over here so you can do some round shapes. But uh, it's just a very quick and easy way to transforming your belt sander into a tool that will help you with different types of projects. So not only you can tackle large pieces of work, but actually you can just do some sanding of smaller ones as well. Have a look. And these are all the basics I wanted to touch on in this particular video. I hope it was informative to you. And if it was, if you did enjoy the video, please drop me that like button down below. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so yet, as I've got a whole series on how to use some tools in a woodworking environment, DIY, I got you covered. But for now guys, that's it. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for your time. Take care.